This episode is brought to you by DirecTV Stream. Introducing DirecTV Stream, the best of live TV and on demand, which means you can watch your favorite sports, movies, and shows all in one place. So whether you want to catch the game live or watch the latest blockbuster, they've got you covered. And there's no annual contract. DirecTV Stream. Get your TV together at directtv.com. Requires high-speed internet and compatible device. Content varies by package and location. Restrictions apply. This is the Marketing Podcast Network. Want Instagrammers and YouTubers to mention your brand? Or do you want to influence an audience to buy your product? I'm Jason Falls, author of the book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. In this podcast, we explore the people, companies, campaigns, and stories that illustrate the difference between using influencers and actually influencing. Welcome to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. Hello again, friends. Thanks for listening to Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast. A couple of weeks ago, a marketing executive with an online retailer in the United Kingdom reached out to ask for my opinion and feedback on something. Her situation was not dissimilar to many people who email or message me with influencer marketing strategies. The company sells sporting goods and apparel, has grown nicely over the last few years, and is trying to find ways to drive more revenue and growth through social media. Like most of us, they're turning to influencers as one channel to improve that part of their marketing mix. But again, like many, they haven't been overly impressed with the return on their investment in influencer marketing. According to her inquiry, many of our influencer campaigns perform poorly or not quite as expected. To date, the company has only engaged influencers willing to exchange posts for products. They haven't had to outlay cash. In their defense, for those of you who think there should always be cash offering to creators, Some of the products they have had to offer score in the thousands of dollars. So it's not out of the question to think a trade for services might be in order on occasion. That gray area between exchanging posts for product and investing in influencers on a more advanced but also cash-centric level is a difficult one to navigate without upsetting some apple carts along the way, either internal or external. So the executive posed this as a question. We're finding it difficult to differentiate the accounts likely to succeed versus those that generate nothing. Generally, our outreach attempts do get responses, though more and more are requiring cash instead of product. Do you think it's necessary to provide cash now as an incentive to better our chances at achieving our goals? She said they would appreciate any ideas I had on how they should better approach influencers and how they should look at compensating them. I'll share my answer to that question in today's commentary. Before I do, we have a special treat this week from Tagger. It just released a new feature called Signals. Think of it as a form of social listening, but specific to influencers and influencer topics. As you probably know by now, Tagger is our presenting sponsor and a complete influencer marketing software suite. It allows you to find, connect, and collaborate with influencers, execute campaigns, and measure success. This new feature makes the platform even stronger. But instead of me telling you about it, I asked Pete Kennedy, the founder and president at Tagger, to explain it all to us. Pete, tell me, tell me what the inspiration was for Signals. Where did the idea come from? Yeah, it came from the need of having a strategy platform for our clients. You know, most marketers are not strategists. And so they see all this data about influencer marketing, about brands, about influencers, and they're like, where do I begin? And that was the reason why we created Signals, was to create a tech-enabled strategy tool for them so that you can really understand what's happening in your industry, what's happening with competitors, what topics are important that you should be able to create tentpole events around. Um, So it really was a strategy uh, need. And then we also looked at our clients' needs of pulling data. A lot of times they'd come to us with really detailed, really difficult data pools that would take 24 hours for our tech team to pull for them. Now they can do that in a matter of seconds with signals. Outstanding. Thanks to Pete and to Tagger for the great product and for helping bring this podcast to you each week. To learn more and get a demo to see if Tagger is right for your organization, even if it's just to check out the new Signals feature, just visit jason.online slash Tagger today. That's jason.online slash Tagger. How do you navigate the gray area evolution of trading product for influencer content and paying influencers? I'll explain that next on Winfluence. This episode is brought to you by Cox Home Life. 
Cox helps make your home smarter and your life easier. And now you can use your Contour voice remote to connect to your home life cameras. So you can view them right on your TV screen using simple voice commands. That makes it easy to keep tabs on what's happening around your home right from your couch. Need to keep an eye on the kids when they're playing outside? Just say, show me my backyard camera into your Cox voice remote and watch them while you're in the house. If you're waiting for a delivery and want to make sure it's there on time, no problem. Say, show me my driveway camera to check on it with your Home Life HD cameras on the TV screen while you go about your day. When you live in a home powered by Cox Internet, you can stay connected to what matters and let Cox take care of the rest. To learn more about all the benefits of your connected home, visit cox.com slash this is home. So a marketing executive at an online retailer in the United Kingdom reached out to explain that she's finding it hard to differentiate between influencer accounts that are more likely to be successful engagements from those that won't. She also lamented the fact that more influencers are coming to the conversation asking for cash payments for their work, content, or exposure to their audiences. To date, the company has only been offering product to influencers and has seen modest successes there. She asked if it was necessary to provide cash as an incentive to better the company's chances of achieving its goals. Here's how I answered her via email, almost verbatim. The position you are in is not uncommon, especially in the e-commerce space. The jump from providing product only to having to compensate beyond is tricky to judge, but I sense a few things in your explanation that might help you take a step back and refine what you're doing to be able to determine where and when it's good to compensate. First, you're talking about a wide range of products. Lower cost items that might sell in more volume are very different than higher priced items that perhaps have more margin. You can send 50 pairs of sneakers to targeted lists of micro-influencers with some unboxing or review requests for little cost. Then you suddenly have 50 different people talking about the sneakers and where they got them. If you pick the right 50, audiences will be hit with multiple items in their feed talking about these sneakers. Then it can become a trendy item they need to buy too. If a discount code is provided, you can turn that outreach into a measurable ROI. But you're not going to send 50 kayaks. You need to find one to two right influencers who can persuade people to consider buying a kayak via e-commerce. That takes a more specific creator and thus perhaps some financial investment to motivate them to want to really push their audience to experience this product. And there are dozens of variations of those in between. Second, like my 50 sneakers example, it's not that you're sending sneakers that matters, but who you're sending them to. Again, you want to try to hit consumers from multiple angles, frequency, so you need to choose a set of influencers that have common or similar audiences. Third, the discount code, incentive, or offer has to be enough to push consumers over the hesitance to act, or to put it another way, motivate them to act because they can't afford not to. These are all just good advertising principles. Reach is important, the number of influencers you use and their followers. Frequency is important. Overlaps in audience of influencers. The offer and the incentive are important. I think if you went back and tested with a more tightly defined group of influencers and more specifically chosen products or price points, you can at least better know what works and what doesn't with the influencers you've already been using. And that's just looking at influencers as a transactional communications method. You can also pick four or five influencers you engage with over time with a retainer or other monetary investment who you supply your range of products to so that they talk about shopping from you frequently. But it's not about sending people to buy one thing each post. It's about building a brand that consumers can rely on to buy all their things in that category. For instance, I found two influencers who were fitness trainers that did an unboxing of their workout equipment. Engage people like them to talk about ordering from your website once or twice a month over time. Give them product, but pay them, say, $1,000 or whatever they propose that is reasonable per month to do so. You don't spend a lot of cash, but you get a consistent drip of reminders to their audience to buy from you. That branding approach over time has a tendency to provide lift, though it's certainly harder to definitively measure. And now back to the compensation question. 
For micro and nano influencers, you can find success with providing just product, but you risk giving away product with no real guarantees it'll lead to sales unless you also provide an insatiable offer or discount to go along with it. That's where you are now. To lower the risk, you are probably going to need to look at more mid-tier and larger influencers who have some experience and evidence of success in persuading their audience to take action. We are far past the point of experienced influencers not providing results and analytics to prove they can move the needle. So maybe start to look at mid-tier folks, 25,000 to 100,000 followers, but ask for their case studies, especially proof they can drive conversions from their audience. If they can't supply that, it means they either aren't that business savvy or they aren't confident they can provide it. But be prepared to arm them appropriately, discount codes, trackable URLs, landing pages, etc., so your case study can be their next great one. I hope that helps. Now, that was my answer to her. I think it might help you too. However, I do think it's fair for her and you for me to reiterate a point I've made several times on this podcast. Regardless of the audience size of the influencers you are working with, think about what you are asking of them. In most cases, you are asking them to A, take a good portion of their time to create incredible content, B, share that content with you to use as if you'd hired a freelancer to create it, C, put that content with your messaging and talking points in front of their audience, a group of people they've worked for years to accumulate. D, engage that audience, and perhaps your audience too, around that content. And E, in most cases, give you publishing and intellectual property rights of some sort. Does any of that sound like it should be a freebie? Would you do any of that for free, much less all of it? Remember, we all arrived at influencer marketing thinking we valued them for access to their audience. That alone is worth an investment. But we've learned they also put time and energy, talent and skill into that content. They engage their audience around that content and they provide far more than just a doorway to a group of people. Even if you offer micro influencers $100 per post, you're at least saying to them, what you do is valuable and we respect that. Having that mentality when working with creators will help fortify those relationships which can lead to bigger and better things over time as those micro-influencers grow into mid-tier and beyond. What's your take on the right time to stop asking influencers to work for product alone and start expecting to pay for influencer content, engagement, and audience access? Record a voice memo with your take and send it to me via email or just send a regular email to jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your comment on a future episode. Have a question or topic related to influence or influence marketing you'd like my take on? Inspire an episode by emailing me at that same address, jason at jasonfalls.com. I may use your question as a show topic. If I do, I'll send you a signed copy of Winfluence the book as a thank you. Winfluence, the influence marketing podcast, is presented by my book, Winfluence, reframing influencer marketing to ignite your brand. Get your copy online at winfluencebook.com. While you're there, sign up for the latest ideas about influence marketing delivered in my monthly newsletter or book me to speak to your company or organization about influence marketing. If you or someone you know is an influencer, a brand manager that uses influence marketing, or one of the many amazing people working in the influence marketing services world, and they would make a good guest for the show, email me at jason at jasonfalls.com. Our theme music is One More Look by the K-Club and Grammy Award-winning producer Jaquire King. Thanks for listening, and remember, when it's not about the person, but about results, it's Winfluence. Hello, I'm Ian Truscott, here to tell you about Rockstar CMO FM. The M is the marketing and the F... It's a well you decide. As you wonder, does the world need another effing marketing podcast? Find out as every week I chat with friends old and new that I've met through my career from techie to CMO and share a tune, a cocktail and their marketing street knowledge. Just drop a dime into your podcasting jukebox and jive along with Rockstar CMO FM. This podcast is heard along the Marketing Podcast Network. For more great marketing podcasts, visit marketing.com. 